Hello everyone, welcome to the BUD 403 Profiles of Buddhist Leadership course conducted by the International University of the East, Los Angeles. My name is Venerable Sunita and I am your instructor of this course. So these are the topics that we cover during this semester. And I want to start today's lesson with this uh, week 3 assignment for you. Okay, let me show you how um, it is done. Uh, for this, I have already set up some Google Drive folders for you. And uh, here we have um, IUEBUD403 Spring 2020 Study Materials. This is a common folder accessible by all the students who are enrolled for this course. So you guys can uh, have a look. And this one uh, is um, assigned for each individual. So only that particular student and myself can have the access. So all your assignments you need to um, upload here. And um, I also have another uh, folder uh, for our university. So uh, they will have access to all the videos that I, uh, all the videos or whatever I want to share with my university, I will share it here. And so let me go here first, study materials, for example. And I have already um, set up here week one, week two, week three. So in that way, you know exactly uh, which week um, do you have to go. And when you click, for example, you click here and you will see the um, the assignment material, the reading materials here for you. You read this one and uh, write the assignments, reflection paper on that. And this one uh, is just a document, but I want to open it for you. And uh, I want to discuss this thing with you. And what you have to do here uh, in all your assignments, this, this formality should be there. Like, title of your assignment should be on top and then first name and last name if you, you also can add actually you uh, your english name or any other nickname if you have so you can add that uh, within bracket um, and um, and then the student id and the course uh, instructor and then the semester and then the university and the date. All these details should be there uh, here. Um, let me go back here. So this. So IUD BU, IUE BUD 403 uh, Spring 2020 student assignments. Um, when I open it, you will see um, all these individual folders uh, with the, the students' assignments. For example, if I open this, um, the student uh, assignment is there. So I recommend uh, what you have to, let me take a quick uh, demo here, how we have to actually do. Uh, for example, uh, week one assignment. Okay, uh, so it's easier for me uh, to recognize. And let's say your name is Vani, uh, and so you save it. And now I can easily um, go to that particular um, assignment, and your assignment, all your assignment should be uh, very nicely organized neatly organized uh, that way here okay so i hope you um, you got it if you have any question you can always uh, get back to me let me know you can text me or you can email me uh, i'll be able to uh, answer you 
one more thing I want to uh, share it to you again if I didn't mention it before. Um, having a Gmail account would be more advantageous, I guess, because uh, uh, there may be some accessible accessibility restrictions um, in some cases. So I can ask, uh, give a grant uh, to you uh, just to read. Uh, if you have another, let's say you have a Yahoo account, and then maybe you don't have access to edit if you want. So that's why I guess uh, you need to have a Gmail account uh, set up for this Google Drive. Uh, sorry if you don't have it, maybe uh, it's easy, it's free. You can also have uh, up to 20 GB free storage here. Actually, I have purchased here some more, so I have more space here. But otherwise, you can have um, a free uh, up to 20 uh, storage, so you can save a lot of documents um, here. Okay. Then Venerable Asaji recited one stanza and having heard only the first two lines of the stanza, Venerable uh, the young man Upatissa uh, attains the first uh, state of sainthood, what we call Sota Panna or stream enterer. So, um, and after that, um, he was very happy. He, this is um, already a consolidation, a confirmation of his uh, um, spiritual truth, uh, the realization of the final liberation. And um, Sotapanna means that, um, uh, stream reacher, or entering the stream. That way your spiritual journey will end up in the final destination, the ocean, the liberation, the Nibbana or the Nirvana. So uh, the friend, now he remembers his friend, uh, Sariputta, he went back to his, he went in search of his friend, uh, Kolita. He uh, told the story, shared the story, experience that he had with Venerable uh, Asaji, and then he shared the uh, the stanza that he learned from Venerable Asaji. He talked about the Buddha, and then he uh, recited the entire st uh, stanza. Having heard the entire stanza, um, Kolita also became Sotapanna. And now both uh, the friends are Sotapanna, and uh, then they decided to go to the Buddha and the the master whom they have never met so far and then they went to the Buddha and uh, they are uh, they became monks and uh, they became such wonderful monks and on a given day Buddha appointed them as uh, the chief disciples Venerable Sariputta is the first disciple Venerable Moggallana is the second disciple. So Venerable Sariputta um, is foremost among wise. Uh, all the other, uh, among all the, the other uh, bhikkhus um, in the Buddha's order, Venerable Sariputta is the number one. So after the Buddha, Venerable Sariputta is the number one a uh, wise person, wise monk uh, in the Buddha's order. And there were many, uh, quite a number of suttas uh, preached by the Venerable Sariputta himself. 
when our Sariputta uh, had the capacity to explain um, certain, uh, certain explain the Dhamma in detail. Like sometimes uh, when the Buddha gives uh, the Dhamma in brief, Venerable Sari Buddha could elaborate them very well. And uh, sometimes when the Buddha was not feeling well, he would ask Venerable Sari Buddha to continue the Dhamma talk for the benefit of all the bhikkhus and bhikkhunis, upasakas and upasikas. And Venerable Sari Buddha had uh, uh, done his duty so wonderfully well. <clears throat> and uh, so some of the, the main suttas like uh, Sariputta Sihanada Sutta, Satcha Vibhanga Sutta, there are quite a number of suttas uh, preached by Venerable Sariputta. And uh, there is also a story about um, uh, Rahula, uh, the son of the Prince Siddhartha. Do you remember when uh, Rahula was born? On that day itself, uh, uh, Siddhartha renounced the world, and uh, when uh, so, when Buddha visited Kapilavatu, uh, his um, hometown, um, Rahula came to him, um, asking for some gifts, some heritage, and the Buddha gave him the gave him the best ever heritage that he could give, uh, that a father could give to his son that by ordaining him and by rescuing him from the entire sansaric suffering. So um, Rahula was, um, Rahula, Rahula was given to Sariputta, Venerable Sariputta, uh, as the guardian, Venerable Sariputta became the guardian uh, teacher um, to to lead um, a little little uh, samanera, little novice monk uh, Rahula. And there is an interesting story. One day, uh, this little monk um, uh, noticed that uh, when uh, Venerable Sariputta was sweeping the temple and he uh, the the young monk noticed that his robe was touching the the floor and um, the young monk he he reminded he uh, this one uh, this thing to his teacher venerable sariputta and venerable sariputta was so humble and it is said that he um, he was so grateful and thankful to the little monk, uh, novice monk, and he bowed to was that side, uh, that direction, as a mark of respect, as a mark of gratitude, for showing him uh, his uh, uh, his mistake. So so things like that, you know, shows such wonderful leadership qualities of those leading monks. They were not leaders for the sake of it. They were real, true leaders who led from, um, led uh, the entire um, group of monks uh, by example. They are exemplary leaders, true leaders. Uh, they were, um, they were seriously uh, following uh, the Vinaya, the code of conduct, the discipline that they were confined to. They were, um, they were uh, supposed to follow, not only asking their followers to follow them, but they followed uh, also uh, by example. So these things are really interesting stories. And Venerable Sariputta's uh, exceptional capacity uh, to establish someone uh, in the um, in the, the Dhamma is very important. And um, in uh, Anguttara Nikaya, Eta Dagga Pali, uh, Buddha um, 
Buddha talks about uh, Venerable Sariputta's um, appointment as the the foremost among uh, the monks, um, as the wise monk, and then also the chief disciple, uh, as uh, Venerable Sariputta as the chi- t- chief disciple among the the sangha members, sangha community, and then. Um, um, it is also said, um, Venerable uh, Sariputto Bhikkave uh, Sotapatti Phale uh, Vineti uh, Moggallano Uttamatte uh, Thapeti. That means Venerable Sariputta is the one who, um, who established someone, who could establish someone who is new uh, to this. Uh, middle path to the Buddha's path he he would be the one to introduce someone to this spiritual world that means he he had the capacity to uh, to open the doors of the spiritual world of someone so that uh, that person could achieve the first stage of sainthood that is called sotapanna as i said uh, mentioned before uh, stream enterer and moggallana uh, moggallano uttamatte tapeti that means uh, moggallana had the capacity to lead them from there onward so the so it looks like um, venerable sariputta had the more most um, difficult task of um, leading people to the first steps. First step is the most difficult thing and Venerable Sariputta had the capacity, intellectual capacity uh, to lead someone uh, to that uh, position and Venerable Muggalan from there onward he had the capacity to um, lead them to the, the Nibbana. So uh, I want to mention you uh, how they have been contributing um, together as such wonderful Kalyanamitra friends. So Venerable Moggallana, uh, Maha Moggallana also is called and he is uh, called Master of Psychic Powers and his youth and his wandering and spiritual search, finding the Dhamma and his struggle for realization of the teaching and um, of course, um, the discussion of these two pair of excellent uh, disciples and Moggallana's psychic powers. And also he had the capacity to penetrate others' minds. That means he could, he could do the thought reading. And his uh, divine eye power, clear audience, uh, divine ear power, clear audience, and the divine eye, clear voyance, and travel by mind made body, astral travel, and telekinesis, um, supernormal locomotion, uh, the power of the transformation, and all these are uh, um, supernatural mystic powers achieved um, very excellently exercised by uh, Venerable Moggallana. And uh, his uh, uh, his previous lives are also uh, discussed here and uh, uh, it is said actually it's um, uh, how Moggallana's uh, if you have noticed Venerable Moggallana's uh, I, I told you about this story before I think how his skin color is different from other people and in most of the paintings you, you can see like his like blue color. Um, it is said um, in one of his previous births that um, he was uh, uh, doing something, um, something, uh, ba- some bad karma, especially he was, um, um, w- because of his uh, previous bad karma, um, he uh, had the beating uh, to death. Uh, he had to undergo uh, the result of that karma uh, during uh, this p- particular birth, even though he became an arhan with such powerful, mighty powers, all those things he had 
but still he could not avoid that. So one day, um, towards the end of his life, what happened? Um, one day he was um, um, sitting in his kuti and then uh, uh, he already knew a group of uh, gangsters coming. Uh, he already saw uh, by his uh, psychic powers they are coming. And so before they came, the first day, uh, Venerable Muggalana uh, went through the keyhole of the door and um, the gangs, uh, gang, gangsters could not find him. And then the second day, um, Venerable Moggala also noticed again these people are coming. And that day he uh, went through the ceiling of his kuti um, by um, using his mystic uh, powers, supernatural powers. And then third day again he saw them coming. And then Venerable Muggalana started to wonder why they are coming after me all the time. I haven't done anything wrong to anyone. I have been an arhant. I have never hurt anyone. What, what is the reason? And then only he realized that as a result of one of his own previous karma, uh, he, his karma, the result of his karma actually is following him. So he decided not to use his uh, magical powers, not to use his supernatural powers uh, to escape this time or to punish them or anything. He would stay, um, stay there. And, but he, he made a promise. Uh, like uh, those Arhans ac actually had also a spe special power to, you know, go to deep jhana and then they wouldn't even feel anything if they do so. And Venerable Moggallana decided to do so and at the end of the the beating, he would, uh, he determined himself, he would go back to the Buddha before he pass away. He, he knew that he is going to pass away after these beatings. So those um, gangsters, they came and started beating him. This time, the third time, they found him inside the kuti, started beating him to death. And so after that, they left and Benbal Moggallana, with his uh, uh, jhanic powers, he came back uh, to life and then... Um, he was uh, almost uh, in a coma and he came back and then he went to the Buddha and um, after paying respect to the Buddha, he passed away. And uh, Venerable Moggallana is also known to as someone who could, um, who could reach uh, the other planets. He could do many, many uh, mystic things such as uh, immersing in the, um, the earth just like we immerse in the water and walking on the water just like we walk on the floor and he could also pierce through the walls and oh, so many things he could do by the power of and also it's very special uh, that he had done a lot of interviews with uh, some special sentient beings such as uh, uh, hungry ghosts he he could interview hungry ghost and he could ask uh, them why did you become a hungry ghost why what uh, bad karma uh, led you to this uh, miserable status and then uh, he shared those um, thoughts experiences uh, with the uh, with the humans so that they could uh, be led uh, to become good people and also sometimes he would go to the and the, meet the celestial beings, heavenly beings, and then he would ask, how come you uh, become such um, powerful persons, like uh, with radiant bodies and uh, very fragrant bodies, like uh, lotus-like um, um, bodies, or very smooth, and uh, different, different powers of those celestial beings. He was asking, what good karma did you make uh, before uh, to be born as these powerful uh, celestial beings and then heavenly beings and then they shared um, those uh, 
good karmas with Venerable Moggallana and Venerable Moggallana came back and shared those things uh, with the people uh, in the human realm so that uh, those people uh, were encouraged, were inspired to do uh, wonderful things. See, these are some of those um, wonderful, wonderful leaders um, who were helping their community in so many different ways. Um, if we talk about Venerable Mahakasapa, he was the father of the Sangha. And one more thing you need to remember is uh, Venerable, um, uh, Venerable Sariputta and Moggallana, they passed away before the Buddha. Uh, but Venerable Mahakasapa, he actually um, survived. Uh, he passed away after the Buddha. And he was the senior most monk um, in uh, the Buddhist order when the Buddha passed away. And Venerable Mahakasapa's story is also very fascinating. And um, you can, of course, read more uh, details. Uh, if you are interested in any of these characters, you can go to this uh, uh, document and read it. And Venerable Mahakasapa is said to have uh, very similar uh, characteristics, uh, body features uh, like the Buddha. They were like very similar in, in, in figure. So some people sometimes they, they confuse whether uh, Buddha with uh, Venerable Sariputta, uh, Venerable Mahakasapa. <laughs> um, they, they, they had such um, beautiful radiant um, uh, complexion and uh, it is said one time um, there was one lady um, and she was um, always offering uh, alms to Venerable Mahakasapa. Um, it is said that she was a former uh, mother of uh, Mahakasapa, Venerable Mahakasapa uh, in one of his uh, previous births. So she still feels connected uh, to, his, uh, to her son and then she used to offer uh, dana, uh, meal uh, to Venerable Mahakasapa every time he goes uh, for arms round. So one day um, the Buddha uh, went uh, on his arms round and um, that that uh, that lady um, she was confused uh, with the Buddha uh, she thought uh, this is um, uh, her son uh, Venerable Mahakasapa and she offered the uh, the the meal to the Buddha and then um, Later on, she noticed and she realized that it was not Venerable Mahakasapa, it was somebody else. She didn't, she didn't know much about that. And then she was uh, feeling little upset about that. And then Venerable Mahakasapa, uh, yeah, uh, it is said that he decided to go to the forest um, and he would uh, be uh, living in, dwell, dwelling in the the forest uh, for the rest of his life as a as a forest monk and um, also it is said that um, he uh, exchanged his um, somebody actually offered him a, a very um, wonderful robe new robe and um, he exchanged that robe with the Buddha and he took uh, Buddha's old robe and he offered his new robe to the Buddha. And so there are some fascinating stories about Venerable Mahakasapa uh, like that. And when the Buddha passed away, Venerable Mahakasapa came back uh, to the Buddha. Until he came, um, the Buddha's body was, uh, nobody could uh, cremate his body. And after Venerable Mahakasapa came, um, he could... Uh, uh, he could pay respect to the Buddha and it is said uh, the Buddha's body was magically cremated um, by some divine powers. Um, so, uh, Venerable Mahakasapa uh, was very uh, strict in Vinaya and he was um, very simple, uh, very down to earth and uh, very humble monk and uh, he also was a very wonderful leader. 
and I want to mention you one of his leadership qualities um, and after the Buddha passing away after three months of his passing away there was a great assembly of monks there were 500 Arahant monks okay actually 499 monks were there uh, excluding Venerable Ananda. Venerable Ananda was not yet an Arahant. So, uh, Venerable Mahakasapa said, Ananda, he, Ananda was the personal attendant of the Buddha and he was the, the treasure of Dhamma. He was very important figure. He should be included into this uh, uh, assembly. But because he was not yet uh, a monk, uh, uh, an Arahant monk, uh, it was difficult and then Venerable Mahakasapa um, asked Venerable Ananda now it is time for you to become Arhant and now the Buddha is no more you uh, have no more other uh, attachments okay uh, actually um, even though he was a Sotapanna monk he still was so much attached to the Buddha and he could not get rid of that and um, so Venerable Mahakasapa guided him, um, advised him to uh, make his best effort to become an Arahant and it is said just before the final day of the uh, the assembly, uh, the, the, the opening of the assembly, Venerable Anand could become an Arahant and he uh, was uh, also a part of the assembly. And in the the assembly, Venerable Ananda revealed that the Buddha's advice to the monks, and in some cases, like um, uh, certain minor precepts, uh, would be okay uh, to to skip. Um, but Venerable Mahakasapa uh, was very. Um, very strong in uh, his position he said we should not change anything we should try our best not to change any precept uh, um, advice uh, prescribed by the Buddha we would follow all of them that was his um, uh, that was Venerable uh, Mahakasapa's uh, decision and the entire assembly of 500 uh, Arahant monks, they, uh, they accepted it. And so later on actually it is said, um, as time goes on, they kept on changing those rules. And you know, if Venerable Anand, uh, Venerable Mahakasapa knew this thing, and if people, if we relax, if we try to um, skip some of those uh, precious or even minor precepts there uh, there could be a chance that uh, it's difficult especially for the first 500 years um, Buddhism was um, um, Buddhism was very uh, in a in a different uh, position different uh, status and uh, even then the first five first 100 years of Buddhism uh, was really, really uh, in a very, very uh, pure um, condition. All right, so um, Venerable Ananda is the one I want to talk you uh, talk about next. Venerable Ananda is the personal attendant of the Buddha, and he was also actually the cousin of the Buddha, and um, uh, he uh, was such an important figure in the the entire Buddha Sasana because he was the personal attendant of the Buddha and still he was so dedicated and still he was so passionate about the well-being uh, and safety and as a as an attendant he knew his role he knew exactly what he should do as a devoted, loyal uh, disciple, uh, attendant of the Buddha. And he was the one who uh, always um, intervene, intervened, uh, coordinate between 
the other parties um, outsiders and the buddha <clears throat> and sometimes the kings would come sometimes the business men would come and sometimes the monks from far away places or the disciples or the lay devotees uh, all would come and asking for an appointment with the buddha you know there were situations like that and venerable ananda uh, very um, beautifully uh, handled those situations and uh, he coordinated between them and especially his uh, uh, his intervention when it comes to the uh, the ordination of bhikkhunis is uh, i think not not worthy to mention here because um, when um, buddha's uh, stepmother prajapati gotami uh, along with uh, 500 uh, female um, friends they all came to the buddha they shaved their heads and they also started wearing uh, robes and um, you know yellow robes and they came to the buddha asking for ordination and then the buddha knew it's uh, it's challenging it's so difficult it's not so easy initially he was reluctant um and uh, uh, it is said and venerable ananda uh, at this time he um intervened he he explained to the buddha um this pajapati gotami is your stepmother and she took care of you uh, everything about you from the very childhood when your own sa- mother Mad- maha paja uh, maha maya queen maha maya devi passed away so ever since uh, step mother uh, maha maya's uh, sister uh, pajapati uh, gotami is the one who took care of you just like her own child so she did so much for you please um, allow her to enter the order um and then uh, buddha um see buddha is also personality his leadership quality so so sometimes when somebody said something good he would not um reject it uh, just because he the leader uh, he is the supreme leader of the sangha community no he he actually listened to that and he took this um as a great leader he listened to his um followers and then he uh, considered that reconsidered then and after some uh, restrictions uh the buddha allowed uh, the female um uh, uh ordination happen and uh, so mahapajapati gotami and so many uh, lay devotees female um, ladies they became uh, nuns as well so venerable ananda uh, have so many things one more thing um there are so many things actually about venerable ananda but one more thing i want to say like venerable ananda had the capacity to learn something by heart uh when he hears or when he listen to the buddha's teaching just one time if the buddha says something uh if he he uh, preached a dhamma sermon uh, venerable ananda could learn it by heart right away had hit his super uh, memory his pure heart and his also it is also actually said to have been uh because of his own good karma uh that he uh, was fulfilling uh, paramitas uh, to become a dhamma treasurer of the buddha sasana so um because of that he could learn things uh, by heart right away and that is why venerable ananda had the capacity to learn something by heart and that is also why in the first assembly of 500 arhantas venerable ananda and his disciples his followers that uh, group of monks were assigned uh, with the diganikaya diganikaya 
they are the long uh, lengthy discourses okay so they um, they were in charge of uh, taking care of those uh, dikanikaya suttas um, and i can also talk about this um, as we discuss about that um when uh, there are three three sections uh, in the buddha's canons uh, in the first assembly all the monks um under the leadership of venerable mahakasapa uh, they decided to um subdivide divide the entire uh, dhamma uh, all the discourses of the buddha they um they chanted they confirm they verify uh, the content and they decided okay this is the final composition of the uh, the entire uh, buddha teachings and then they were decided uh, they were divided into three categories vinaya sutta and abhidhamma so there is there is one monk called upali he was the one in charge of vinaya buddha appointed him as the in charge of vinaya vinaya means the code of conduct and um, so that was not a very big uh, volume so venerable upali's uh, team was um, in charge of um, taking care of the the vinaya pitaka or the basket of uh, the discipline and then the the most voluminous one is actually uh, the sutta pitaka and venerable ananda uh, learned um almost all the sutta pitaka uh, by heart and most of those suttas were coming from the mouth of uh, the memory of uh, venerable ananda that that's why his uh, his presentation his presence at the first assembly was so important and venerable ananda um that is why also given was uh, appointed as the uh, venerable ananda and his group was appointed as the um the leaders of taking care to take care of the the diganikaya so the sutta pitaka was divided into five diganikaya madhyama nikaya sangyata nikaya anguttara nikaya and khuddaka nikaya okay so sutta pitaka uh, here the diganika is uh, having the long discourses and madhyama nikaya was having the short i mean the middle length uh, sayings middle length discourses there are 152 suttas in the madhyama nikaya and venerable sariputta's disciples you know his students uh, that team was given uh, they were appointed as the in charge of taking care of the madhyama nikaya and venerable mahakasapa himself um took the responsibility uh, and along with his uh, disciples his students uh, to take care of the uh, sangyutta nikaya and venerable An- anguttara we will talk a little about him also later uh, according to our time and so venerable uh, anuruddha um who was the foremost among the divine eyes um so he and his uh, followers uh, were appointed as the in charge of uh, the anguttara nikaya um those are numerical uh, teachings and then the the last one the khuddaka nikaya the minor uh, suttas uh, there were there were originally actually 15 books uh under the khuddaka nikaya okay maybe most of you know about dhammapada jataka stories and all so they come under this uh, khuddaka nikaya so um the rest of the monks all the other monks they were supposed to uh learn all these uh, 15 uh, khuddaka nikaya texts by heart so that because those days they didn't have any books they didn't have any writing so they uh, learn everything by heart that was the the way they learned 
So learning by heart uh, is a great tradition. We call it oral tradition. This oral tradition was a very reliable and uh, established and recognized um, pedagogy or or a, or a system uh, of education uh, those days in the ancient past. Until uh, those Buddhist texts were written in books, uh, until first century AD, it is said uh, uh, in uh, the first century AD, Buddhist, uh, Buddhist texts, canonical, all these canonical texts were uh, written in the books uh, actually palm leaves, they originally wrote in the palm leaves uh, in the first century in Sri Lanka. Uh, until that time, uh, the monks had to learn uh, the entire Tipitaka by heart. And also because of that, even today, like for example, when I was a young monk, um, we, were, um, we were trained to learn by heart. We, we learned so many suttas by heart when we were very, very young, a uh, young monk. I became a monk very young, like when I was 11. So that time um, I started learning. I, I was, um, we were given a book. So every single morning uh, I used to learn uh, one particular segment and then I went to my teacher and um, I, had to, um, I had to recite it by heart. Uh, if I make three mistakes, I would be turned back and I had to do it again. So that's the, the way we do. And then we repeat. We repeat in the morning, in the evening. And so we keep uh, repeating that way. It establishes in our long-term memory. So from short-term memory to long-term memory, it was a smooth transition. The repetition is a very, very important thing. So the Buddhist monks, they had the capacity to learn things by heart there. And also, you know, by learning, uh, uh, learning by heart makes your heart also clear. <laughs> like, um, you have to be really focused. Um, your mind should be very attentive and you don't have many, many other unnecessary thoughts. You have a task to do every morning. You learn and then again you repeat. Uh, so this kind of chanting and repeating you hear all the time from all the monks. Uh, so there, are, even uh, today, we do have some monks. You will be surprised to know there are s some monks who could read uh, the entire canonical text of 55 volumes all by heart, everything learned by heart. There are some monks uh, who have the capacity to do that. So very, very special monks are there. Um, so they have a long uh, tradition uh, like that. Okay, so that's about Venerable um, uh, Ananda. And Venerable, Ananda, uh, Venerable Anuruddha is the master of Divine Eye. And uh, he also became uh, a monk along with Venerable Ananda, actually. Venerable Ananda became uh, um, a monk, entered the order along with Ananda, uh, Bhagu, Kimbila, and also Anuruddha, and Upali also was there. So they all were wonderful monks. And um, uh, Venerable An Anuruddha's um, contribution is well remembered especially when the Buddha during at the time of the Buddha's passing away um, so Venerable Ananda was still a Sotapanna monk he only had the first um, stage of sainthood he was just a Sotapanna stream enterer only and he didn't know whether the Buddha actually passed away or not because Buddha was just lying very silent and after the final word of the Buddha, Buddha said uh, um, uh, his final words were uh, work hard uh, for uh, to liberate yourself, you know, appamadena sampadita. Um, so the Buddha said uh, work diligently and work hard 
to liberate yourself so from the sansaric uh, um, sansaric misery and uh, after that uh, buddha said no other word and he kept quiet and actually he was meditating he was going from one jhana to another another he went to four jhanas he went to eight samapatis back and forth he was uh, going spiritually and then he had the last birth with uh, mindfulness uh, with awareness with complete awareness uh, he 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 knew that but somehow during that time of uh, transition um venerable ananda uh, thought uh, the buddha already had passed away and he wanted to ensure uh, verify it from venerable anuruddha because he was the foremost among the among the divine eye he was the master of the divine eye and that time venerable uh, anuruddha said uh, no the buddha is still uh, alive he is uh, actually um uh journeying through his uh, jhanas and samapatis those um, high spiritual attainments he is just um, experiencing these uh, spiritual powers right now so he is still alive he said and um yes so there are other monks like mahakachana also is a wonderful monk he was the master of doctrinal exposition um he had a, a very powerful uh, um energy his um, um his power to elaborate things uh, especially if the uh, the buddha said something in brief uh, he had the capacity to elaborate there are many suttas uh, also by uh, maha venerable maha kachana in theragatha also you can find about him uh, and then there are some um uh, women disciples <clears throat> um so we can talk about kema uppalavanna kema and uppalavanna they were the uh, chief women disciples okay kema was like sariputta and uppalavanna was like uh, moggallana and they were also very uh, they were also from very good uh, families very well to do families and um, uh, there are a lot of uh, beautiful stories about uh, these uh, bikunis and how they have been so much dedicated uh, to their practice and how they have been so much kind hearted and uh their exemplary leadership their exemplary lifestyle and their compassion their true generosity and so many things are uh, they are uh, about this uh, this uh, sisters uh, this uh, women uh, nuns um okay for for example Uh, we also learned last time about patachara and patachara um, story i told you about how she lost her parents her, her brother and then he, her husband was uh, bitten by a snake and then he, her one son jumped into the river and disappeared with the water and the other son was taken away snatched away by a hawk and so she lost everything she became insane and then finally she be- uh, became a buddhist nun and she became a very very devoted bhikkhuni and it is said she was the preserver of the vinaya she was very disciplined uh, bhikkhuni uh, very concerned about the the vinaya rules Uh, code of conduct so she is very important character to queen samavati uh, embodiment of loving kindness she was very very uh, compassionate uh, nun and uh, um kisa gotami uh, also we talked about her, how she became bikuni uh, after realizing uh, the fact that her dead child was uh, the story about the mother and the dead child uh, we we talked about that before and uh, badda kundala kesi the debating ascetic is another uh, 
character and Amber Pali is uh, also very important. Uh, she was uh, uh, a general courtesan, and um, yeah, there are there are uh, many uh, stories about these uh, great uh, women disciples of the Buddha. Uh, especially, the, the they became bhikkhunis actually. And uh, Angulimala story we um, we also discussed last time. The murderers wrote to sainthood. How uh, the making of a serial killer uh, becoming a monk and he became Anguli Mala. Mala is the necklace, Anguli is the, the, the finger. So the necklace of fingers was his name later on. But his uh, initial name, original name was Ahinsaka, means innocent. So the innocent man became... Um, a virtual monster later on and but somehow he also became a very compassionate person and uh, he also wanted to help others um, and especially when he met one uh, pregnant uh, mother um, who was suffering so much and he came to the Buddha uh, and suggesting him, how can we help her? And then the Buddha wanted to help Venerable Angulimala too because he had a bad time uh, because of his own bad karma. He, Whenever he goes out, he would be hurt and um, bleeding all the time when he comes back and so many things happen uh, to him. Uh, that time the Buddha has when Angulimala uh, okay, this is a good time for you. The, you uh, go and do some asservation by the power of the truth that I have not done anything bad. I mean, I haven't hurt anyone um, during uh, my uh, time as a monk. Ever since I became a monk, I have never ever hurt anyone by the power of that truth. Uh, may she be well, happy and healthy and uh, go there um, and uh, um, pray for her. Uh, by the power of this truth, may you be well and happy and healthy. Just bless her. Go there and bless her. The Buddha instructed uh, Venerable Angulimala and he went and then ever since the Angulimala Sutta, uh, became very popular and Venerable Angulimala also became um, uh, he, he was also respected and loved by many many people afterwards and also it is said um, um, even today when um, when we meet uh, a pregnant mother uh, we always um, recite this Angulimala Sutta um, just before the uh, the delivery of the baby, we do that. Okay, so I think with that, um, I would uh, like to conclude for today. And uh, I want you to go through any of these uh, Buddhist monks and nuns characters. Uh, and then I want you to um, make a summary and send it to me. Okay, and uh, uh, by the time I get some, uh, according to the uh, the assignments that I received from last week, I'm going to make some Google Drive folders and I will share it with you, share them with you personally, so you and I can read. And then uh, the more I get from you assignments, I will make uh, different uh, folders for those respective students. Okay, that's it for today. I'll see you next week. Until then, I wish you all a very peaceful and happy week ahead. Bye-bye.